So here's something most people don't like to be told. I need you to memorize this. But what exactly are we talking about here? Your ABCs, the periodic table, the exact date that George Washington may or may not have chopped down a cherry tree? Nope. We're talking about information that could potentially help you get through Battletoads without smashing your controller into the TV. Over the years, one of the most common criticisms I've seen made against older games is that they force you to memorize them. So I thought to myself, Hey, why don't we talk about that? Now, where this comes from is that in a lot of these older games, you often have very little time to react. And so in order to help yourself out, if you've memorized what's coming up next, you'll be able to react to it quicker, in theory. Because here's the thing, just because you know something's coming doesn't guarantee that you're going to be able to react to it successfully. For example, life. A lot of us know life's coming, and yet it can still absolutely steamroll the best of us. For a video game example, let's talk about the Turbo Tunnel in Battletoads. Now, you can memorize what's coming up in Battletoads, but you still got to be an absolute thumb wizard to be able to pull off what you need to in order to get through that stage. This leads to what I feel is a very interesting question when it comes to what makes for good game design. Basically, what's better? Game design where once you've memorized whatever it is, it makes it very easy easy after you've done that, or game design where even after you've memorized the section or what have you, it's still challenging and therefore the challenge is not strictly about having to memorize it. I suppose that some of you might just say, screw them both, memorization in itself is bad game design, so if it's ever a part of the equation, that makes for bad game design right there. But then I think it's also fair to ask the question of, can memorization in games be fun? And I think in some cases, for some people, it definitely can be because if you look at how pervasive memorization can be in some of these older games and how popular a lot of these older games are, then yeah, obviously I think people are having some fun with it. I feel like memorization can allow for steady progression. You memorize a little bit more every time you're trying to get past that difficult part, not to mention you get better at the actual gameplay aspects that are around that part of the game as well. I think one of the key things to consider is that the memorization itself can become fun if what you're memorizing is something that's fun to do. In fact, quick little story for you, hopscotch. Now, I don't know how many of you were hopscotchers back in the day, but at my school, hopscotch was king out on the old schoolyard. Now, to do hopscotch, you could look down at the squares while you were going and probably make your way through. But if you wanted to be a real hot dog of the hopscotchers, at least at my school this is how it worked, you had to look up, which meant you had to memorize those squares. And so when the kids who could do it without looking down would hopscotch along, we'd all be there watching them do it ooing and eyeing and hopscotchity dog. They had the biggest smiles ever on their faces as they did it because they were having fun having memorized those squares. I'll be honest with you, when I finally figured out how to beat the Turbo Tunnel in Battletoads, that was really enjoyable, at least for me personally, because the thing is, it actually is really fun when you're good at it. I mean, cruising along in that speeder, doing jump a zippity-doo-dahs, and zippity A's, yeah, it feels pretty good. I think that's another good factor to consider. If you finally memorize a section of a game and get past the part, does it make you just think, oh, thank goodness it's finally done? Or during the process, the process itself, were you having fun learning it? And good way to figure out that is, did you keep with it? Odds are, if you weren't having fun, you probably would have stopped. Although I know sometimes some of you think, all right, now this is personal. I am going to memorize this and get past this part if it's the last thing I do. Hey, there's a good quote for a tombstone. I'll beat Battletoads if it's the last thing I do. And then next to the date of birth and the date of death, you have the date that you actually beat Battletoads. I also want to bring up that it seems like memorization is only really a factor in 2D games, isn't it? And especially side-scrollers, although 
It's actually kind of not, because here's the thing. While in a lot of those 2D games, things are very linear, scripted, and you know exactly what's coming, which leads to the potential of memorization, even in more open-ended games, you still have stuff like enemies with a set of enemy patterns, and oftentimes you'll end up memorizing those enemy patterns in order to fare better against those enemies. I mean, just think about almost any boss fight in a video game ever, whether we're talking about 2D or 3D, whether it be specific attacks, specific movements, specific defensive maneuvers, almost every boss fight you can memorize at least some of the aspects in it, and that's going to really go a long way in helping you defeat that boss. But like I've been alluding to for most of this video, it's all about striking that perfect balance of having just the right amount of memorization at play. For some gamers, that might be little to none at all. For some gamers, it could be a lot more. It just depends. And actually, I just thought of a fun example of a game where you cannot just memorize exactly where the enemies are going to be. And that would be the Ghouls and Ghosts series. A lot of people hate this series because the enemy patterns are so wildly spastic and unpredictable. You can't memorize them. Now, obviously people's opinions on this game series really vary, but I've always liked it because I feel like no matter how good I get at these games, I can never just go on autopilot. I always gotta scrap my way through and each playthrough always looks a little bit different than the last. In fact, that sets up nicely for this video's question, which is to just see if you can name a game that you personally feel has elements of memorization that you think either hurt or help the game, and of course, why you think that is. So for that and any other comments you may have, leave them down below, and I will see you in the next video. He's the Red Trooper, yeah! And he's talking, talking about video games. He's the 